All right, so since this is statics and we're summing the forces and forces are vectors, we're going to start slow. I don't want to leave anybody behind. Let's review 2D vector addition, right? When we're adding vectors. So we're going to need to add multiple vectors and replace with one. We'll call it a resultant vector. Resultant vector. So if I say, what is the resultant vector? That means add them up and, and give me the answer, right? Or I might just say, hey, add up these vectors. All right, so uh, you all know the difference between scalars and vectors, right? Scalars are just magnitudes, uh, whereas vectors are magnitudes and direction, right? Magnitude and direction, like, like speed, let's say. Uh, some scalars like speed is just a scalar. Uh, whereas velocity is speed and direction. Um, length, uh, mass, you know, things that are just magnitudes are scalars, but things that have magnitude and direction, uh, acceleration has magnitude and direction. And here we go, forces, and there are many, many others, but forces are vectors. Uh, direction really matters. All right, so in the textbook, the book will, if it's a scalar, it'll just write, you know, whatever letter it is, R, S, you know, whatever, it'll just write it, it, it usual. Um, in textbook, it will bold a vector, right? So this is bold. And that's what I'm going to do, too. When I'm typing something out, if it's a vector, I'm going to bold it. Uh, but if it's not, then just leave it regular. It's really hard to bold it by hand, so when I'm going to write it by hand, I put this uh, like half an arrow over it to denote that it's a vector. Um, and you see how that's harder to do when you're typing it. So anyway, by hand, I'll put this arrow. You can put a hat. You can put a bar, something over it to, to show and to remind yourself and to show me that it is a vector. So that's how we're going to denote vectors versus scalars. All right, so vectors, we want to add them together. There's going to be two methods. You're probably more familiar, you're probably more comfortable with the second method, which we will get to. But first we need to do this because there are actually some cases where this method works mathematically a lot better than the second method. So, so bear with me. Let's do this, this first topic, this first homework using the parallelogram rule. So for the parallelogram rule, you need to draw the vectors tip to tail. All right. So parallelogram rule, draw the two vectors tip to tail so you put the tip of one to the tail of of the other um so it could be two or more vectors draw them tip to tail so do you see what i mean um, if i want to add up vector a and b then i need to draw vector b instead of drawing it at the origin over here let me draw it over here with the same magnitude and the same angle that I drew it right here, all right? And the resultant is gonna be, you know, if I do A plus B, then this black vector would be the resultant vector. And so now I have a triangle, and I probably know two sides, I probably know some of the angles, and if you know some sides and some angles of triangles, you can use the law of sines, um, or the law of cosines, to find the, to solve for, to solve for whatever you're trying to solve for, or to solve for the resultant's magnitude and direction from the positive x axis, okay? All right, so I see over here, I drew uh, B to the tip of A, but I could have drawn A to the tip of B, and do you see why it's called parallelogram? Well, we get the same resultant. So it doesn't matter whether you put A plus B or B plus A, right? Y'all know that uh, addition is, what is that, commutative or, or whatever that property is. I could probably ask my son. Uh, but that's why it's called parallelogram. You can do A plus B or B plus A, and then you've got a triangle. Now, the hard part might be finding these angles. You know, what is that angle? What is that angle? What is that angle? Uh, but if you know two sides and you know a couple angles, you can use law of sines and cosines to find that. So, a review. Law of sines says that sine alpha over length A equals sine beta over length B equals sine 
theta over length r. And so instead of length, we're, we're looking at magnitude. So the magnitude of a, the magnitude of b, magnitude of, of r. <clears throat> Just make sure that uh, this angle is opposite that side, right? This angle is opposite that side. This angle is opposite that side, <clears throat> right? And so this is really a couple of equations in one. You know, just look at A and B, and there's your equation. If you know three out of those, you can solve for the fourth one. Or, or look at just B and R, or look at A and R. So it's really kind of three equations in one. Or you can use the law of cosines. Um, depending on what angles, you, what angles you know and what angles you don't know. Uh, so in this case, if you know the angle theta and the sides A and B, which are between theta, this is, you know, I'm getting flashbacks to geometry, like side, angle, side. If, you know, if it's a side, angle, side that you know, then you use law of cosines. But in general... Uh, I try to use law of sides. If I can't use law of sines, then I'll use law of cosines. Just make sure that um, that that theta is opposite that r. So it doesn't have to be r and theta. It could you could have over here b and beta over here, and that would be r. You, you, you see what I'm saying? Or you could have a on the left hand side, alpha of cosine on the right hand side. So right, just make sure that these. That angle is opposite that side. Now, caution. <clears throat> when you're using the law of sines, your calculator will spit out the acute angle, the small angle, right? So if your sine is, I don't know, 0.7, and you do inverse sine, then your calculator is going to give you this answer right here, whatever um, angle, whatever the acute angle is that has a sine of 0.7. But equally accurate is this point right here, right? The obtuse angle, right? The supplementary angle. So just be careful. Look at the figure. Look at the other angles. If it's like this, you know, if you've got a small angle and a small angle, and, and, and it's like this, greater than 90 degrees, if you use um, signs, your calculator might spit out a small angle, but it's actually the other. It's the uh, supplementary angle. So just make sure that the correct one, here we go, all three angles in your triangle have to add up to 180, right? All three angles in your triangle have to add up to 180. So, so if you got that this angle is like 30 and this angle is 20 and this angle is, I don't know, we'll see what the other one could be, you know, then, then maybe, oh, maybe that's not 30, maybe it is, what, 150, Right, that would make more sense to have my angles add up to 180. Okay, so review law of sines, law of cosines. Let's let's practice on a simple one. What if I want to add up two vectors, vector A that it's 100 pounds at 30 degrees, and vector B that it's 80 pounds and it's directed at 15 from um, from the y-axis? All right, let's draw them tip to tail. If I have a straight edge, that would be better uh, but I'm gonna draw this one right here and the resultant is gonna be that length right there so here's my triangle and what do I know I know that this side is a hundred I know that this side is 80 what angles do I know alright do I know that angle right there not exactly do I know that angle right there I think I kinda do let's see and this is probably the trickiest part this is 15 degrees from vertical, so it is still 15 degrees from vertical. That's 90. What is that angle? Do I know that angle? Do you see this Z? I look for Zs. Uh, that is 30 degrees right there. So that angle right there, 30 plus 90 plus 15. Let me kind of clean it up. Uh, that angle right there, 30 plus 90 plus 15, is 135 degrees. All right, so this is one of those side, angle, side. I can use law of cosines. All right, I can use law of cosines. So it'd be something like r squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine theta. So r squared equals a 100 
squared. Maybe let me let me keep up my units here. Make sure uh, 100 squared plus 80 pounds squared minus 2 100 pounds 80 pounds cosine 135. Yeah, my units work out pounds squared. Pounds squared. Pounds squared. Cosine 35 does not have units, and R is going to be pounds. All right, so there we go. I would plug those into my calculator, and I've got R166 pounds. So that's part of my answer. The resultant, that is the magnitude. Magnitude. Uh, but I need the angle. I need the angle. How can I find the angle now that I've got that side and the angle opposite it, I could use the law of sines to find this angle. I'm going to call this angle beta right here. Yeah, I think beta would be good. So law of sines would be sine of 135 over the side opposite. It is the sine of beta over the side opposite. What side is opposite beta? 80. 80. There we go. And also, law of sines could also be 166 over sine 135 equals 80 over sine beta, right? You can flip both of those as long as you're consistent with your uh, law of sines. There we go. And so my only unknown, so plug that in my calculator, divide it by 160, multiply it by 80, inverse sine, right? I would get beta is 20 degrees. All right. This is almost my answer. This is almost my answer. But I want y'all to give the direction from the x-axis. Give the direction from the x-axis. That is that angle but my, my resultant is, is what? It's that angle plus 30. Uh, it would be 50 from the x-axis. So my resultant, here we go. Final answer, 166 pounds. This is how I like you to do it. Give me that arrow right there. And that arrow just shows me that you are measuring above the x-axis. It is 50 degrees above or 50 degrees counterclockwise from the x-axis. So, so there we go. Always define, define angles. Positive counterclock, positive counterclockwise from the x, or from the positive x-axis. All right. So there we go.